The circus, da, 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 Afro circus, Afro circus, Afro. Poke's okay, it's poke going. Up, poke it up. Man, you are typing. I know, sounds right? Like, sounds like Phil during the podcast. <laughs> it sure does. Tappity tap type. Tappity tap tap tap. tap all tap, I'm tap. getting on. All I'm, oh, there we go. I can see it now. Ooh, stream status is bad. Mm-hmm. Welcome to your crappy Atlanta internet. Uh, I can see it now. It's good. It's running oh, fine now. It, it, it was it was lagging right at the beginning. I was just getting a. Sp- I'm not on the good Wi-Fi. Oh, it's doing it again. You're bad at this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we got four people watching now? your shame. I mean, whatever you're doing is is like 30 seconds ahead of what we're gonna see. How's it looking now? You should turn off your um, webcam feed on Skype. Mm, that's a good idea. Because that'll help. Good thinking. How do I do that? I don't know. Just turn off your webcam on Skype. I- I'm surprised it lets you use it while you're using it for uh, your capture card. Good point. But yeah, the, the, the stream is like crap right now is it better uh give it give it a sec just, just How about now? relax i can't even load it up nope it's oh there we go it's going again we're going can I you mean, hear us what's the worst that could happen there's only one person watching right now that's me there are four people watching. Three people. Oh, now it's three. Bum, bum. This is going to be quite an evening. You need, it's you that need bad? Some, it's, it's all right. You need some good streaming software, my friend. Maybe a, maybe a PC to run it on. Just saying. Wow. Mm. It looks okay yeah, this, to me. This looks fine. It looks It looks fine. Hi, Dr. Nick. Hi, everybody. You were a lot skinnier when you took that picture you used for your profile pic. What do you mean? <laughs> you just look skinny in that picture. <laughs> that was taken in June. Man, you have porked up. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to like this. How's the video, everybody? How's the audio? Can you hear the game? Can you hear the game? Can you hear Greg? What's Sounds going on? Me. Sounds pretty good to me, except that it keeps stuttering. But there's nothing we can do about that now. Wow, well, that's true. we're moving now. It's it. It's just, we're we're moving. We're on. <laughs> we're moving and we're grooving. Work, we're working without a net. A Hopefully, you're recording the audio because. Uh, oh shit! I have to record the audio. Yeah, you should probably. Do I have to record the audio? No, I've got it. Okay. Kind of. Good lord. Sort of. What a disaster. <sighs> when should we start? Oh god. You know what? I need to go I need to go take a phone call real quick, sorry. Oh, okay. You go do that.
All right. So this is GameCube video, so it's not going to be amazing or anything. I mean, this isn't a remaster of Star Fox Adventures. All right, everything seems okay. That's good. Good so far. See what happens when Greg comes back. Let's see some of the other characters here. We've got Peppy. Sleep on the job. You got Slippy. Doing the audio. I can change the language. All right. What language are we going to use? Bad English? Mm. Uh, we can just turn the subtitles on and off. That's it. That's all we got. All right. That's good. Let's go with that. Should I move where my uh, camera is? Uh, I, I think you're good. I think well, you should just start. Should just start? Should start? Ten o'clock. Come All on, right, man. Let's do it. Come on. I want to start with the the GameCube sound effect. The boot. Oh, jeez. Here we go. Let's do that. That'll mess up the stream Such real good. Such a big Nintendo nerd. Clunk. Wasn't that great? I missed that. Did you do? See, I can't hear what you're doing. So you should have done. You should have done the baby sound effect. Start what button do you have to hold down to do the base? I sound don't effect. remember. It's one of the shoulder buttons, or maybe it's both shoulder buttons. I don't remember. Hmm. Is this? Are you streaming in Dolby Pro Logic Two? No. <sighs> Missing out. This is what HDMI we need is some, sound. What we need is some Q sound. Dolby Atmos. Dolby Atmos. You gonna, you gonna intro this bad boy? What are we doing? Well, you're hosting. Oh, I thought you were still hosting. This is review review. This is the second episode of Review Review. Back in the day, we review games for Electronic Gaming Monthly. CJ reviewed a lot more than I did. I'm Greg Stewart. CJ is playing Chris Johnston. Uh, yeah. We are from the Player One Podcast. We are ex-EGM editors, and we used to review games for a living. And now that we've been out of the game for a while, we thought, what would be more fun than going back and playing the games we reviewed 15, 20 years ago? That's and right. Reading the review. Letting everyone know how stupid we were. I think we should start playing this. Seeing if we agree with it. Yes, let's start playing this. While you get going, okay. we'll, uh, we'll, well, we'll let it play for a little bit, but um, I've got your original review here. Which was, I gave uh, it a great score. Mm -hmm. You did not. Mm, that's not how I remember it. Mm -hmm. I gave it the highest have... score that it deserves. I was going to say, you may have given it the most uh, reasonable score. <laughs> but not not a great score. Yeah. Let's check so out just, this cutscene. Yeah. Let's do that. Crystal. Isn't that like a an alcohol? It's also a burger chain down here in the south. Really? So of White Castle we have Crystal. Spelled exactly the same way. White Castle's terrible. Now you can't hear this, Greg, but there's the nonsense language of Dinosaur Planet. Yes. So yeah, that's something that we haven't talked about, or we are going to be talking about, I should say, is that uh, this did not start out as a Star Fox game. Oh. It started out as an N64 game called Dinosaur Planet. Yep. And there's a lot of remnants of that. Crystal was always the main character, or one of the main characters. This, this, this uh, female character you see on the screen. Well, wasn't one of the gimmicks of Dinosaur Planet that you could play as multiple characters? Yes, there were two. I've actually got one of the old previews in front of me from EGM. Oh. Dinosaur Planet, which we'll get to a little later. Okay. We're starting out with the shooting scene. All right, so, yeah. This is, uh, yeah. 
exciting game play here. Yeah. Basically. So yeah, Dinosaur Planet, or sorry, Star Fox Adventures uh, was the first outing for Fox McCloud and Friends on GameCube. And yeah. not nearly a Star Fox game. It was a Zelda-esque rare collectathon. When I mean rare, I don't mean that it was hard to find. I mean it was by the company rare. And uh, uh, CJ being a big fan of Star Fox, you want I'm going to give it to you right now. Okay. Star Fox Adventure looks great, but its fresh visuals are quickly spoiled by the same old collective bunch of items ad nauseum gameplay rares recycled for years. Dino Planet's inhabitants can't seem to do a damn thing by themselves. No wonder they were so easily enslaved. Star Fox Adventure's boring, tensionless story doesn't help matters either, and the lack of help for puzzles makes them more frustrating and fun. Not even the flying bits save this from mediocrity. They're too short and feel tacked on. And why the hell do I have here the same slippy, peppy, general pepper babble in every submenu? Every time. Mm-hmm. Skip this adventure and wait for Zelda. 4.5. Out of 10. Out of Important. 10. To Out note, in, cl- in case you did not read any game this time. Yes. Out of ten. So, uh, you were an outlier, because we've got two other reviews here, because of course this was EGM, and we reviewed three times, and I'm going to quickly re- read the other reviews. Uh, Shane Bettenhouse playing Star Fox Adventures thoroughly messed with my brain. One minute, it's Zelda Deja Vu, solving puzzles deep in a dungeon, then a level of classic Star Fox shooting mayhem only to be followed up by a rare style cutscene inclu- featuring a wise-cracking cartoon bird. It's a bizarre mishmash of clashing styles, concepts, and gameplay that, despite being all over the map, is still a must-play title. When must I first started play playing, title. however, I had my doubts. The first few hours suffer from poor pacing and an overabundance of mental fetch, fetch quests. Thankfully, once you start exploring vast dungeons in search of spellstones and Krizoa spirits, the game hits its stride and it's all good from that point onward. The later level designs and bosses totally make up for the dull opening sections. The quest is long, 20 hours plus, sufficiently challenging and rewarding. Visually, you'd never know that this was once an N64 title. It's one of the sweetest looking games I've ever seen. The graphics are simply phenomenal. Utilizing Couldn't, every clearly, special... Clearly, can, can yeah. you tell? Yeah. Utilizing every special effect at the cube's disposal. The gameplay harkens back to the N64 days, specifically the two Zelda games. The control mimics that of Link's beloved quests perfectly, and that's a good thing. I suggest that all Zelda fans give SFA a chance and stick with it. Overall, it's a highly polished effort. Special note, if you, unlike me, think talking foxes are sexy, add two points to my score. What? What? (laughs) That's ridiculous. gave it an eight. So he's saying that if he thinks foxes are sexy, it's a ten. Jeez. So he gave it an 8. The other reviewer was James Milky. James Milkman Milky. As 3D adventure games go, SFA is near the top of its class. Well, Crazy. It ex- well, it I disagree. Exact- <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> well, it doesn't exactly break new ground. Rare games rarely do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The execution Pun. is simply impeccable. From Fox's fluid, killicky, of soul caliber fighting style to the variety of weapons, upgrades, and the clever uses for your dino sidekick. SFA gives you plenty of cool things to do in this sprawling epic. Minimizing frustration, Fox auto-jumps, taken straight from Zelda, and ledge grabs with the best of them. Graphically, the game is a work of art. Only a few years ago, visuals like these would pass for a Pixar movie. (laughs) Come on. Clunky interface issues aside, SFA is a stunning addition to the series 9.0. Stunningly bad addition to the series. If you doubled your score, you would get to Milky's score. Yeah. Robert so Bidman, I remember Robert playing the chat. Dinosaur so Planet as a furry before furries. So. Yes. I remember playing Dinosaur Planet on the GameCube at E3. Dinosaur Planet on the GameCube or in the on the? Oh, sorry, N64. Yeah. 
I thought it looked okay. I was actually sure. really excited when they added the Star Fox name to it. I was excited about this game. Well, you know, I mean, it, rare games were they were a they were a an acquired taste. I found some were better than others, but you know, and they they rare. I mean, Nintendo had something good in rare in that rare pretty successfully emulated what Nintendo was doing. Mm -hmm. right? right, like you know, this being Zelda. Yeah, exactly. So Banjo Kazooie being Mario. Mario, right? So, you know, I mean, th they had that going for them. But mm -hmm. yeah, I I mean, I was not around early enough to remember playing this on the N64. Because that was a while. Like that, would, that game was around for a while. Like Dinosaur was, Planet it had been delayed multiple times. Yeah, which was which was like a rare thing, right? Because the same thing happened with um, Conquer, which was around forever mm -hmm. before it finally came out. Um, there was this game. There was uh, oh, sorry, not only rare, but um, there was Eternal Darkness. That was an N64 game before it uh, came to the N to the GameCube. And what was the other one I was thinking of? There's another. There was another Nintendo game that was around for oh, that was around forever. And then I forget what. Um, there was one more rare game that was around forever. But uh, yeah. Anyway, I mean, I thought I thought the the idea of adding Star Fox was a good idea, for sure. I did too. Um, and this game came out like right around the time that Microsoft bought Rare, right? Yes, I think so. Let me go look that up while you're playing. Okay. Because I think they bought Rare and then dumped this game out. Oh, actually... That's what it felt like. Speaking of that, um, the other game I was thinking of was... Um, oh, the first 360 game from Rare. Not Perfect Dark Zero, but... Oh. The other one. How am I supposed to get that? I I don't need it. So Microsoft acquired Rare in 2002. And Star Fox This Adventures came out in 2002? 2002. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. And it it really felt like they dumped this out to go work for Microsoft. Yeah. But I remember when we got this game for review, I was very excited about it. And <laughs> it was one of those situations I think where we got it. Oh shoot. Um in one of those lock boxes. Do you remember those? I remember those. Yeah. Um, yeah. Getting Nintendo games for review back in the day was great because they were covered. I, what were those boxes made out of? Some kind of metal. It was heavy anyway. It was heavy. Yeah. But yeah, you'd have somebody from Nintendo would down. fly down yeah. and deliver this lock box. And it was a GameCube in a locked metal case. And you could still get at the um, AV equipment. Right. But that was about yeah. it. Memory card slot, controller cords. So apparently, um, it I was should have after read the, what I was supposed to be doing here. It was after the completion of Diddy Kong Racing um, that Dinosaur Planet, that Shigeru Miyamoto apparently demanded that Dinosaur Planet be reworked as a Star Fox game because they need a Star Fox game for the GameCube. Is the, what I'm reading here. Okay. So, yeah. I should have been reading the tutorial instead of talking. Mm -hmm. Yes, you should have. Cameo was the other game I was thinking of. Was, didn't Cameo start life as a, like a GameCube game or something? Yes, it did. Oh. Yeah, You're right. Actually, it started life as an N64 game. It started life as an N64 game. Oh, my God. It made it all the way to the 360. And then it was a GameCube game, and then it was an Xbox game, and then it finally came out on the 360. Why can't I get that? Good lord. I need that! Insane. So... I'm killing yeah, these um, jellyfish things. But yeah, so lockbox. 
Yeah, so the way that it used to work, you, you play while I explain it. So okay. working at in, working at the uh, EGM, or working at any games magazine at the time, when Nintendo, normally when you had to review something, or even a preview, um, you would just get sent a build. And especially as we get into, C, you would get, or an EEPROM or something, but as we get into CD-ROM consoles, um, you just get burns. You just get discs. And they, they normally had to be played in special versions of the system, or if it was a Dreamcast game, you just needed to have a key disc to fire the thing up. Um, yeah, Two Human is another one that started really, really. Thanks, Blair. Um, so, but with Nintendo, it was a completely different process. If you had to review a Nintendo game, a, a representative from Nintendo would actually fly to your office with suitcases, sometimes, full of consoles with EPROMs of the games you were reviewing. Um, and the consoles were locked in these metal chastity belts that literally covered everything, and I mean everything, but the AV ports, the controller ports, and the power and reset buttons. Yeah. You couldn't, and, and they had big old padlocks on them. And the person who was there with them didn't have the key to the padlocks. <laughs> <laughs> but they also weren't allowed to let them out of their sight. They had to be in the room, technically. They had to be in the room if those things were out of the box and being played. That's well, actually, no. Uh, that was the rule. Was the they way didn't all follow it. But when the they rule. came for like a review tour. But at a certain point with GameCube, they just left the lockboxes. I was getting to that, yeah. So, but and, and I want to point out that this even happened with Game Boy stuff. Like you would get, you would get like a. I remember vividly playing Game Boy Advance review games where you're literally playing this big metal beast with it, with a Game Boy Advance nestled inside of it, uh, and that was the only way to play it. And yeah, as as they got to CD uh, systems themselves, GameCube being the best example, they did just start sending out the locked boxes. But up until that point, N64, you would have. I played through Paper Mario with a Nintendo rep sitting next to me. Yeah, I remember Because, that. again, she couldn't leave. She was there at a hotel. She would stay at a hotel. She couldn't leave the consoles at the office. And technically, like, even if she had to get up and go to the bathroom or something or go to lunch, she was supposed to take the like, locked consoles that nobody could do anything with and put them in the suitcase, zip the suitcase up, and take it with her. That's right. That was how Nintendo did things. It sure was. It was awesome. Back in the salad days. Back in the salad days. The all or nothing days. <laughs> and so, yeah, so you, you got this. This finally came out. We'd been, you know, you've been anticipating this for quite a while, right? Because you're a rare fan. That's right. You like you like those games. 64 and Banjo yeah. and... Yeah. And, and fan. you like Star Fox. You like Nintendo. Yeah. And so... And so, yeah. and so, this shows up. Mm -hmm. Shane Bettenhausen was the review editor at this point, right? Yeah. Pretty sure. So, I seem to remember... Because, I mean, you have some wildly varying scores here. You're the outline. Mm -hmm. 4.5. Uh, Shane true. gave it an 8. Milky gave it a 9. Ethan gave it an A++ or whatever he gave it in, uh, in game, game When. Game When, yeah. Game Now, yeah. Um, so... That could lead to some pretty heated discussions. I, I've been I've been in the middle of those discussions, especially with Shane, more than more more than one time. Mm -hmm. How uh, how'd that go? What was that like? Well, it was heated, as you might expect. As hot I, as that um, torch on the screen. What's that? As hot as that torch you've got on the screen right now? Yes, hotter, with more blue flames. Mm hmm. No, I remember taking this game home over the weekend to play it. And I spent a lot of time with it, and at first... You know, I mean, this is a pretty straightforward Zelda-style game. I enjoyed it. And then I realized... I took note of some of the design decisions in the game. Right? Mm -hmm. You mean like a reviewer? And, like a reviewer should, yeah. And... Maybe about two hours in, I was like, oh... This is a bad game. <laughs> this isn't this isn't good at all. Now, 
are you sure that that just wasn't your your anti Microsoft bias showing through? Because you know no. you knew that Rare was leaving for for Microsoft. No, for the it was gr- not at all. For the green pastures of Xbox. <laughs> no. It. Uh, part of it was uh, we've already kind of seen some of these things where Crystal picks up an item that for the first time. And in Zelda, you know, you have the little uh, fanfare that plays as you pick up a rupee for the first time. Mm-hmm. But in, Dino- in this game, not Dinosaur Plant, Star Fox Adventures, it's a pretty long fanfare that plays. Mm-hmm. And it plays with every item that you pick up for no reason, really. I like and then it would like do things too. like, for instance, there's a shop in the game. And to get to the shop, you have to, like, go into a cave, climb up a ladder, walk five feet, jump down, then walk through this, like, really long hallway. And, of course, that's to hide the load time, right? Mm-hmm. But it's just a bad game design. Just, why even why even have that? And it, it, this game is full of decisions like that, where... They make something needlessly difficult because they're hiding a load, uh, some load time or some other thing. Yes. Why? Do you not agree? Do you think? No, I think you're right. Um, <laughs> do you think that maybe that had to, like, do you think that was just an issue with the GameCube? Or do you think that was a, a knock on from the fact that this was a an N64 game? I think it was a knock-on because this is a rush job. Right. Like, they couldn't think of what to do because they had to get this game out real quick. Right. Um, so, favorite. just, uh, you're still you're still with... God, you're still on Crystal section. I know. We gotta get to Fox. We gotta get to Fox. Come on, man. I know. I'm trying. What did I need to bring up here? Did I need to bring something up here? Hey, this was going to be a Nintendo 64 expansion pack game. Did you know that? I didn't. It's not safe. Press X to roll out of the way. The other thing is, is that even when this was changed to Star Fox Adventures, I think it was um, still delayed a lot because, well, I don't know. What, what year did the... No, GameCube came out in 2002, didn't it? No, it came out in 01. Okay, this was supposed to be a launch window title for the GameCube. I was reading yeah. through old EGM previews uh, tonight, getting ready, and uh, yeah, it was meant to be. Not necessarily a launch game, but uh, yeah, it was supposed to be a launch window game. You have Michael Nelson in the chat. Michael Nelson in the chat says that history has vindicated your score, by the way. I think so. Last place on nine. What the hell? Where's all the flying? <laughs> so yeah, the original game was uh, the plot is largely the same, although they did need to rewrite fair chunks of it to to fit with Star Fox canon. Um, but the original game was supposed to feature Crystal, this character, and a character named Saber, who. If you know anything about the history of Rare, of course, it was a character named Saber. Um, I wonder if it, he was a wolf. Probably. I'm guessing he probably was. Um, go look up your Rare history. Saber Wolf was one of the very first games they ever released. Um, True. And Miyamoto, I said earlier that, that Shigeru Miyamoto had demanded that they turn this into a Star Fox game. If you remember that Nintendo owned 49% of Rare at the time, so they got to say stuff like that. And uh, Rare would jump. Um, But he also, in another interview that I was just looking at, he said that it struck him how similarly, how similar Saber was to Star Fox, which again makes me think he was probably a wolf. Um, But the idea was that it would be, uh, you know, you had the two characters, Saber and Crystal, and they would have dinosaur pals, which they still do. uh, And those didn't change at all in the game. And uh, yeah, I think they, I wonder if the flying sections were added. For the Star Fox branding, like because because I mean we saw a flying section with Crystal right at the beginning here, so I don't know if that was something that already existed or 
if they retroactively added that to this intro. That may have existed because that you weren't in an R wing or anything. Actually, you know what? I'm saying that, and now it's stupid because I have one of the earliest previews that I could find in the collection I have, which was in August of 2000 when this was still Dinosaur Planet. And there is a screenshot of an aerial battle. So they did exist. There you go. At first, um, a Panzer Dragoon esque battle with a huge enemy airship. Dinosaur Planet is scheduled for a holiday release in the year 2000. Test one, the test of observation. Watch closely where I hide. The rest is okay. It's not terrible, just nothing new, says Blair Farrell. So a lot of people in the chat are just saying that the game starts slow. Could it be that you just played the first part of the game and then wrote no. the review? <laughs> Really? Uh, definitely uh, no. Okay. But here's the thing. I mean, this is a great example, right? This is the first thing you really do in the game, right? It's a find me X number of times. Right. We haven't even we haven't done it's any. It's a combat very yet. rare thing. No combat. Uh, rare. I found that when they, the difference between like rare emulating Nintendo and Nintendo is rare couldn't get pacing right at all. And they, it felt to me that they hid, they hid a lack of compelling design underneath. Well, like you mentioned in your review, tons of fetch quests. I wasn't like that, their their 3D games were nothing but fetch quests. Yeah, most of the time. Well, and if you'll remember, there was a Penny Arcade strip when this came out. I that, actually was going to uh, reference that. That was a that. great. That's one of my favorite Penny Arcade strips. Yeah. Where, yeah, where Fox is just tasked with getting a million different things, and he finally just tells the character to piss off. February yeah. 2001 preview for Dinosaur Planet. Despite rumors it would be held back for the GameCube, Rareware and Nintendo assure us that Dinosaur Planet is still an N64 title, and will be when it hits stores sometime in 2001. Maybe on the N64 Mini we'll get to play Dinosaur yeah. Planet. That'd be cool. And you thought that, that uh, publishers and developers lying to players was a new thing. This is on a this yeah. this is on the same page as a preview for Custom Robo V2. <laughs> oh, nice. For GameCube, right? No, that was also N64 at the time. Oh, interesting. Okay. Custom Robo came out in Japan on N64 and then GameCube on the US, right? Yes, I think so. I think so. So by... Why would you want to play this game without subtitles on, by the way? Well, I'm, the I'm guessing language. the subtitle... I'm guessing the alien language is always subtitled. Hmm. Possible. But that's just me. All right, now I wonder if I can go up there now. It's... Why do I have this issue if the, the dinosaur planet's not in here? Start. Oh, there it is. Page 60. Still no combat. I have no weapon. Nothing. And then in August of 2001 was the next time this game was in EGM. And that was when it had changed the Star Fox Adventures. Okay. For release in November of 2001. Oh, that didn't happen. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Scheduled to launch alongside the GameCube this November. Starring Fox McCloud and his fruity looking dinosaur sidekick. Well, that's pretty bad. Prince Tricky. Prince Tricky. What do we think of it? Star Fox was a bit unpolished at the show, but the potential is clearly there. And at that point, we were we we thought that maybe Crystal had been replaced by by Fox, because there's actually a question in this preview of whether or not Crystal will even be in the game. Oh, okay. Hmm. Who was reporting on that? I don't know. 
So what are you thinking of this now? I mean, you're complaining that there hasn't been any uh, combat, but is is the game combat. play at least any good? Or well, I don't know. It's had me carry a bunch of explosive crates around, and then it had me guess which cup the little spirit was under. So no, the game has not aged well. <laughs> Oh, got our slippy. Affirmative. I'll get back to work. So they did say too that the even though Nintendo was uh, the company obviously that dictated that they make this a Star Fox game, um, that they were very hands off in development. Okay, old timer. Turn it Although um, you can Taki, tell Takaya Imamura did come to live at Rare Studio for a while. Slippy, it's General Pepper. General Pepper here. I have a new mission for you, Fox. You are approaching Dinosaur Planet, an ancient world. Many fans and critics do not consider Star Fox Adventures to be an essential Rare see. title. Chunks no shit. Been torn from its surface. It's As the negativity really was not. attributed to Microsoft's takeover. If Dinosaur Planet explodes, it could affect the entire Lilac system. It felt rushed. And I think in that EGM review, they have a sidebar, right, about uh, the shooting sections being super short. Yeah, 63 seconds long was the first one they clocked at. Yeah. I can go back and look at that again. Hang on a second. Because, yeah, this was actually a big review. Like, So this was one of the multi-page EGM reviews. Two pages. Yeah. Which was always written by the... Uh, the main reviewer, although I was pointing out to you when I was reading it earlier, is that they kind of just ignore the fact that you didn't like it and just go on about how great it is. Which isn't because generally how we reviewers do that. Loved it. Yeah. 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 As you can tell by the scores, a strong rift of opinion divided our reviewers. The string of simple fetch quests that bogs down the first few hours could turn off players looking for an adventure that starts on a grander scale. Although, also, many of the game's puzzles require tons of experimentation to solve, so some patience is required. For most folks, however, Star Fox Quest will be fun, challenging endeavor. I disagree. Oh, do you actually get to fly now? Is this the first 63 second segment? That's right. Here we go. Playing as Star Fox. Oh! Nobody, nobody blink. Just going through some rings. Oh, no, no, no. I don't even shoot any of those enemies. Huh? No? Look out for the ass. Look at the lighting on those asteroids. That's some garage shading right there. Nice. It's very garage. Garotical. This seems longer than 63 seconds. Uh, no, it hasn't been yet. No? No. I didn't even do anything to a force field to make it go down. <laughs> I just literally flew through some asteroids and that was it. Oh, here are the dinosaurs of Dinosaur Planet. I'm going to be meeting all of them and doing chores for them in a minute here. <laughs> this does feel longer than 63 seconds. The machine was on crack. I might have made him time it. Well, you know, it's honestly, if it, if it was longer than 63 seconds, it wasn't by much. True. Yeah. You got like one and a half points per second. Very funny, sir. True. It did. I mean, it does look nice for a GameCube game. It only looks nice because it's got that um, weird, like distorted fuzz on things, right? That's yeah, why I mean, people I think the game looks good. They look at Fox and they're like, "Oh, you can see you single fur. strands of yeah. hair." Yeah, that was that was definitely a big deal. Time. Yeah. Yeah. 
and I guess, I mean, the nice thing is, and it, it's kind of a, <clears throat> I mean, we'll go see when we see the actual characters, but I think there's like the major disconnect that I always had with this game is that you've got Star Fox characters who look like Star Fox characters, but then you've got everything else looks like a rare design. Yeah. And, you know, rare has this sort of very particular character design. I would, I'm a, I would actually say it's not even good design for rare. Really? Quite honestly, no. I mean, if it was truly rare design, it, these dinosaurs would have googly eyes. Right? Right. And they don't. Do you know that you can make Tricky evolve if you play to fetch with him enough? I don't want to. Your eventual dino buddy? I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to find him here. Oh, it says you don't find him until about an hour into the game in this review anyway. Well, we're a half hour in. Yeah. If you think I'm staying on past 11 o'clock tonight, you're out of your mind. True. If you come to Star Fox Adventures expecting to pilot the R-Wing spaceship through fun-filled flying levels, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Rare did include some brief shooting stages between levels of Zelda-inspired action, but when we say brief, we mean brief. The levels are over in a flash. First one clocks in at an amazingly terse 63 seconds. All that you have to do is fly through a set number of gold rings before the level ends. Sure, you can scramble to shoot enemies, collect bombs and power-ups if you really want, but it's not necessary. It's a real shame that more wasn't done with these stages, though as the tiny taste sampled here could easily have become a larger part of the game. Of course, Nintendo hasn't completely forgotten Fox's roots, that's why they've enlisted Namco to produce a new Star Fox space shooter for the GameCube, due out next spring. If you don't like this game, just hold on a few months. Yeah. Got something for you. How do I grab that? I, I don't I don't know. I could be playing Gran Turismo right now. Oh, here's Stand the up. store. Stand up here with you. Here's oh, really? So this the dinosaur just said, "Go inside the store and look around." So here's the store. Check this out, if I remember correctly. Okay, you gotta climb down. Oh wow! Cam change camera angle and everything. Right you inside just, the door. You can't just drop down. Oh yeah. Let okay. me check. Actually, hold on. Let's see if we can drop down. No, I can't press a button and drop. That's funny. Now look at... <laughs> I just have to jump up to that little cliff. <laughs> Needlessly. <laughs> run down this long hallway. And now I'm in the store. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's inexplicable why that's there. That's the there guy should be like load time. The guy should be like, sales are down and I can't figure out why. <laughs> Maybe if you didn't have... A pit at the door of your store. Maybe if it wasn't most extreme elimination challenge to get here every time. Yeah. <laughs> his 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 store his store curtain comes with its own wind. Yeah, we're inside and the thing is just flapping. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's a, it's a wind tunnel. He's probably got an open window somewhere over there. That's why all the torches are burning straight up. Well, this is an underground store. Oh, get out. Yeah, but there might be another exit. Man, that is a long way to go to find things to buy. I'm getting lost in this store. It's like Ikea in here. I, I, Ikea. You don't have enough scarabs. Oh, no, not enough scarabs. So wait, you know so, how in so, Zelda shops, mm -hmm. they like you see the shop owner and he's got like three little things there. Yeah, yeah. This was like three different doors you have to go in. Yeah. You, this really bothered you, didn't it? You're really, you're really upset about this. It really did bother me because it seems so useless, convoluted. Put that down. Yeah. You don't have enough scarabs. How can the dinosaurs who walk on all fours? even get down to the store. 
<laughs> that is a very, very good point. Yeah. Who said that? Blair Farrell in the chat. That is exactly it. <laughs> This is exactly the problem with this game. Uh, it's awesome. And now I can't figure out how to get out. Yeah, and now we're stuck. This is going to be the next 20 minutes of this this stream. <laughs> CJ trying to find his way out of the store. <laughs> Seriously, how do I get out? Uh, the, try another door. Is this not a hub? No, it's not. Token. Cheat token. Why would I want a cheat token? Fox, look, he's going to jump in. Oh, here we go. There's the exit sign. See? No. The green oh, that little arrow, arrow above the red door. That is definitely not up to code. That's good game design, clearly. Uh, God. And to get good out, point. I also need to drop down. Climb well, I mean, that's just that's just realism. Mm, no. Man, he looks like he is... That is rough on his neck. The climbing animation is like... Huh. I'm looking up another preview of this thing. Okay. I'm gonna walk up here and get this flaming barrel. I can't get the flaming barrel. We said this was coming in November 2001. So this issue is March 2002. <laughs> All right. For our next preview. Oops. I can find page 90. That's all the four DVDs for 49 cents ads. Columbia House. I was part of the Columbia House VHS movie club. So was I. Some good so times. Star Fox ways. Adventures. With Game to, with GameCube Zelda taking up its new love it or hate it Looney Tunes look, remember when that was a thing? Yes. Gamers hoping for a slightly more realistic looking 3D adventure. Good lord. May want to set their sights on Nintendo's upcoming Star Fox Adventures. So I can slide down this ladder, but not the ladder in the shop. Yeah, because that would make it go too fast. According to, although uh, it's no secret that SFA's main gameplay is heavily inspired by the two N64 Zelda titles, according to developer Rare, there'll be plenty of other playstyles as well, many of which have yet to be revealed. Barring any more delays, expected in stores on March 25th. That didn't happen. <laughs> These water effects are nice. Yeah, somebody else in the chat was saying that too. Hmm. I can't figure out how to do this bomb flower thing. Well, go on a I thought maybe fast. I'd have to roll into it, but that's not how you do it. Do a barrel roll. That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> but no. Let's see what we got over here. So having Mitch having missed its March twenty fifth release date. <laughs> That's not that big of a delay, though, right? From March to September? Not, not for too. Rare. No. Oh, see, now in... in But now we know why. Okay, because in May 2002, the main, cr the main push of the full-page preview we did, because we had a great previews editor at that point, um, oh, God. the hair technology, mm -hmm. that's what they added. You may have noticed a slight difference between these screenshots as those you've seen previously. Something's very different about Fox McCloud. His hair is thicker, fuller, more vibrant. But it's not a shampoo. What is it? A, they just rare gave the furry creatures of SFA makeover, and now they all have a more natural, hairy appearance. Yep. So that was what that was what the delay was at that point. More har. Five years since Star Fox sixty four, the last time we saw Fox. Yeah, so there you go. So then they were saying that the new release date was June tenth. It's you know, it's it's funny 
it's funny to me, like, the, yeah, you're right, that those aren't really, like, for rare, those aren't really long delays, but I like that they have, like, day and date release dates each time. Like, it's not, yeah. you know, in March. No, it's March 25th. <laughs> like, exactly. Or, or June 10th now. Hmm. I wish when you rolled into something, you would actually hit it. Instead of just rolling. But then you get then you get stuck on things. Where it's am I just, supposed to go? Bad game design. I don't even know. Yeah, Blair, Blair Farrell me. made a good point, and uh, and um, Ethan brought this up on a recent uh, Player One podcast as well. That this was all around the same time. Like Nintendo was killing it as far as the games they were releasing because we had this. We have Metroid Prime, we have Mario Sunshine, and Wind Waker in early 2003. I mean, <clears throat> you didn't it's want for Nintendo licenses. Asleep. Well, it's nighttime, man. When do you sleep? Uh, Not Michael when I need Nelson. to get a bomb plant going. Michael Nelson, I don't know who wrote that preview I just read because um, that was before we started putting bylines on full-page previews in EGM. Which just It was just before because I think this next one actually does have a byline on it. Can't even jump or anything. What am I supposed to do here? And you didn't look up an FAQ before you started tonight. I didn't. We're starting Anyone to see in the chat, you want to help me? Five. Please. So, having missed their June 10th release date, in October 2002, we ran another preview. And September 23rd, I think that was the actual release date, right? Oh. It, it came out in September. I found a weapon. Oh, there you go. Now you can fight Killick style. Whoa, wow, that is one big disembodied head. Jesus. That is... Wow, that's terrible. Why would you... Like, it doesn't even look like she's... Wow. She's not even... The head is not even floating around Fox. Like, that's freaky. It's an overlay, but it's not treated like an overlay. Like, it's not a... Now, can Fox see her? Uh, I mean, he's looking at her, and now he looks like he's having an orgasm. <laughs> and, wow, where did that staff go? <laughs> oh, I guess it, it retracted? It did. Wait, am I not supposed to hit this thing? I have a preview here now that was written by John Dudlack. Oh, I'm gonna get some combat. Here we go. Disembodied heads back. God, that's <laughs> terrible. That's so weird. So this game has Z targeting. Good. Is it? Uh, that's that's with the rumor. Oh, so that little red icon there isn't a heart. It's uh, who's targeted. I thought it was okay. a heart. Oh, wait, it is a heart. It is a heart, yeah. You, you thought it was a heart for good reason. It is shaped like a heart. It's a heart and also the indicator of who I've got selected. I am hey, good. Sarah Bess. Welcome. This is episode two of, by the way, you're watching episode two of Player One Podcast re-review, re-review, oh, <laughs> review, review, episode two, Star Fox Adventures, the game that only CJ tried to warn us about back in 2002. No one listened. I think history has uh, proven out yep. that I was right. Yep. I think so. And back in the day, it wasn't like There's you could hop on the thing. internet and see what other reviewers were doing. No. Right? Clearly not paying enough Star Fox. It's really poorly designed. It's just poor design. Like, you know, blur out the screen or something, or, you know, just make it clear that she's not in the scene. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant game design. Cool. 
So we're going to start trying to do one of these re re reviews. I can't I don't know why I can't get that right. Review, review, review. reviews. Review reviews. What do you think? Once a month? Yeah, it's part of our uh, Patreon goal, right? Which actually we have not met. <laughs> Shocking. But we kind of like doing this, so we're doing at least this episode and see if we can make the uh, Patreon goal to do the rest. And hey, if you want to support uh, us and, you know, actually help us meet that Patreon goal, patreon.com slash p1podcast. That's right. Set up as a monthly support, so even if we produce five episodes like this in a month, it's still only that one price per month. That's right. Helps CJ uh, play crappy old video games like Star Fox Adventures. Sure does. Let's see what power I get now. Maybe it'll help CJ buy real software for streaming. This is real software. It's as real as it gets. Mm-hmm. Press A to use it. Sign to Y for instant access. My goodness. So, another thing about the game design, I went down into this cave to literally go down a long hallway and collect a staff upgrade. That's it. I don't understand. What's the problem? No problem at all. Gotta put upgrades somewhere. They just leave them out in the field. Well, that's not fun. Not exciting. I suppose. Hold on, let's see. Wait, I don't have... I gotta collect more gems. Of course you do. It's a rare game. Did you feel like you'd collected enough stuff? No. To use the fire blaster. Do I have enough power now? <laughs> Let's try it. Go back to the platform where you fought the shark claw. Look above the door at the blast board placed above it. Wow, Braden Manning in our chat, he knows. I hope that was from a, uh, like an FAQ because the fact that you know those names so well, you didn't work for Rare, did you? We haven't been we haven't been like tearing apart your work for the last hour. That's right. Because if we have been, it's all CJ's fault. I love this game. Ooh. I'm assuming the Sharp Claw were those uh, enemies I fought over here. I'm in. Is anybody there? Uh, good. Oh, the prince. You, okay? you feel like you're being attacked. My name is Fox McCloud, and you must be the Queen Earthwalker. No, so no, wait, we're going to get no, the prince no, now? That's right. Oh wait, maybe there's a fetch quest. I like how the subtitle just says Dino Talk. <laughs> Ice it, I didn't even notice. Tiba Tiba Ice <laughs> Mountain. <laughs> this is ridiculous. How could anybody think this game was an 8 or a 9? <laughs> Remember, uh, standards were lower then. And when I was reviewing this game, I brought... Because uh, I was roommates with Phil at the time, mm -hmm. and I brought Phil into where I was playing, and I was like, "Am I, am I crazy in thinking this is just bad?" That big stone golem could not be more of a rare design character. But yes, go on. That's all I need to know. And Phil was like, "It looks kind of bad." 
I don't know. Haven't you finished that translator yet? It's nearly ready, Fox. I just need Slippy is also a disembodied head. Slippy out. They all are. It's just it's so bizarre. And then and where did he go? Like it's not like Fox is holding the little communicator. It just <laughs> floats out in front of him and then just drops off the screen. Like what is going on? That's right. Sure. Nine point five. Where's the big rock guy? Uh, he was in the middle of one of those, like, well, don't go that way. That's the store. You'll be an hour just getting in there. True. Was he down when here? You just, when you just get in the arrow wing and say, like, you know what? Screw this place. You all deserve to go extinct. You can do that, but I don't have the coordinates for any other planets. Oh, no, do you feel like right. do you feel like a slow, painful death out in the depths of space would be better than this? Or no, no. So okay, CJ, we're getting near the end of mm -hmm. our, our allotted time here because we try to keep these oh, two around an a hour. New item here's this long oh, animation. Are we picking it up? It's a what is it? Scarab. That is a scarab. These are the currency of Dinosaur Planet. Ah, so you know Everything else that I collected was not the currency. So, okay. Getting back to what I was saying, because we're running out of time here. Mm -hmm. So, 4.5, that was your score. Yeah. Uh, you feel like you were too harsh? Do you feel like you weren't harsh enough? Of course you can't get in there yet. What is that even asking for? You clearly need some dynamite. Really? Right? Come dino -mite. on. Go with. Go. You gonna go with me on that one? I love it. <laughs> I wonder if I have to go up there. Uh... I think. I think history has uh, that this game is not good, and that giving it a a nine <laughs> or even an eight is just too much right i mean i would tend to i would tend to agree with you of course i tended to agree with you back when it happened so yeah no but i know there were some that branded you as history's greatest monster that's true a lot of people thought i was wrong what did I get? What did I get? Um, gimme, uh, gimme. Uh, Here comes a little fanfare again. Dandelion seeds? This is a bomb spore. It's full That's of explosive plan. goodness. Hey, there's some soft earth right in front of that crack. I wonder if that's what you have to do. I'm going to say yes. Keep in the crack, CJ. I'm going to bomb that crack real good. Bomb that crack. Oh, there's the C button, the universal uh, icon for planting. That just dripped out of his nose. That's some terrible animation there, too. So now oh, you I have, have to, to shoot it. it to get it to explode. Can't you hit it with your staff? Fire oh blaster. God, that's no fun. Skadoosh. I love that the dinosaur laying in there didn't even move. Nope. That's one tough mother. You need to. Oh, you're you're in with the golem. This guy. Find the big floating icon in front of him. Give me that. There's a bridge back there. You probably have to get up on that. Let's try it. Nope. That sure looks like over there. There's sort of a that outcropping there. Yeah. It's up pretty high. Kind of looks like it'd be a good spot for the camera to be if you wanted to talk. I mean, to like this right guy. here. Yeah. Nobody yeah. ever brings me gifts anymore. Nobody ever brings me gifts anymore. How about you Welcome fetch me to your five next fetch quest? <laughs> Barrels, yeah. Five sandwiches. I need five. He didn't sandwiches. even say what he wanted. It, yeah, all he wanted Nobody you to know is that he never gets gifts. gifts CJ, if you really gifts? cared for him, if you really cared for him, you'd know what he wanted. How about the dead carcass of this dinosaur? <laughs> wow. This isn't a good time to talk. I'm here because I'm blocking your way to this area of the game. 
Okay. Can you put me to sleep? So, this has been Dinosaur Planet. I mean, mm -hmm. sorry, Star Fox Adventures. Um, One of those. Yeah. I'll bet you that Golem is the same voice as the Great Mighty Pooh. I don't know because I can't hear him. But uh... oh, I think I found gifts. Bunch of scarabs. And I can't run. Wait, where, where am I supposed to go? <laughs> They're leaving. <laughs> did I get any? Yeah, I think you did. All right, I think we need to call this a night, CJ. Okay. Do you have an outro we want to use? This has been the second episode of Review Review. Re See, you can't Review. say it either. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. This episode made possible by your Patreon support. Patreon.com slash P1Podcast. If you like this type of episode where we play some games and reflect on the scores we gave old games... Uh, head over to our Patreon page and chip in a monthly contribution. We'll do more of these. Yeah. My turn next time. I want to I want to choose one next time. You want to choose one for you to play? Yeah. Well, we have been thinking about doing Animal Crossing where we load yeah, up our old town saves. Yeah, load save. up our old saves. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be really fun. Yeah. Just so you all know, CJ went out and bought this game for this episode. He didn't own it. That's true. That's how I much you normally own a game I gave a 4.5 to. Mm -hmm. Unless it's Bubsy 3D. But well, I didn't yeah. review Bubsy. Alright. It's been fun hanging out and watching you play this crap, CJ. Next time we'll do a good game. Uh, the Animal Crossing idea is a good one. I think it'd be fun or, to revisit. Uh, Town. Guitaru Man was the other one. Guitaru right there, Man. Yeah. yeah, I've got that one. Yeah. You know, if you um, if you sp if you chip in on Patreon, you know, drop us a message on what game you might want to see us do. That's a good idea. Yeah. So I, I dare say sooner or later we'll, we'll burn through. Um, actually, it'd be a while before we burn through all of our review games, but that's true. Especially you, because you were you've been there. You were there since you were like ten. I reviewed a lot of games. Mm. It's very true. poorly. All right. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I think we're going to sign off. CJ's done blowing up the dinosaurs. I want to collect more bomb spores. Jeez. That's going to be my gift to that golem thing. The gift of an explosion. <laughs> what? I don't know what... I don't know. I don't, I don't know even what that know what means. you're. I don't even know. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> All right, that's it. Thanks right, everybody. Folks. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.